Welcome to GovCast. I am your host, Managing Editor Amy Kluber. With missions of ensuring national security, supporting governments, and civil rights, and combating crimes globally, the FBI's tech needs enable the agency and its agents to carry out important work. For FBI Information and Technology Branch's Executive Assistant Director Rich Haley, this means leading three divisions that support the agency's IT needs. With a background that began in the U.S. military and continuing as a civilian in finance at various agencies, like CFO at the FBI, Haley brings a unique perspective to how the agency approaches IT modernization and how tech will keep the agency at the forefront of combating crime. Thank you to our sponsors, Dell Technologies and Kerasoft. Hello, my name is Matt Vimdadi. I am the Regional Sales Director at Dell Technologies. Here at Dell and Kerasoft, we are seeing leaders in the federal government raising concerns around legacy infrastructure, collaboration tools, and remote work capabilities. And Dell's listening and acting. As a trusted partner to FBI, Dell worked with Executive Assistant Director Rich Haley and his leadership team to implement mission-empowering platforms focused on secure, remote work systems. Work as we know it has transformed for us in only a few months, and the Bureau has made great strides to ensure that their mission is not disrupted through implementing innovative technologies, such as our secure mobile devices and virtual desktop solutions to their workforce. We're excited to hear from Haley during this unique time of telework to get a glimpse of how the agency systems are handling the shift and what to look out for in the future. Rich, great to have you today. You have quite an interesting background and now leading FBI's three divisions directly supporting its IT needs. I want to talk more about your path to the agency, getting a glimpse into your leadership in the important area of the intersection of national security and technology. So thanks for joining us today. It's great to be here. In your role leading the FBI's IT branch, what do some of your priorities look like? I've been doing this for about 10 months. I've been here at FBI going into this next year. It'll be 16 years on the finance and facility side. And most of my time at the FBI has been around business acumen and how do we improve processes And most importantly, how do we make sure we're providing the best capabilities we can to our agents in the field that are putting their lives on the line every day, to our intel analysts across the organization, to the men and women that are doing really critical jobs. So as as I come into this IT role, it's looking at those capabilities and how do we improve them to make them more user-friendly, providing those operational nexus capabilities that they need to be able to connect dots respond to critical incidents and be able to use technology versus manual processes that often take a long time. So for us and the organization, we, because of our classification requirements, oftentimes we are out of security concerns. We're tethering agents and our field employees to desks and offices. And so how do we responsibly move to a more mobile capability so agents can be out in the field doing investigations where we need them and that people aren't stuck to a cubicle, they can collaborate, whether it's in an office or in proper venues. Also looking at managed services, the FBI does a lot of things on the investigative criminal national security side very well, but do we need to be doing IT functions that others in the private sector can do better than us. And so how do we move to a more managed service platform? And then finally, digital capabilities. We're seeing in these cases, like in Las Vegas, previously in Boston, most recently in Florida, these cases are creating very large data sets. And how do we move that data across the country back to headquarters from a field office so it can be exploited and processed appropriately? So those are those are three of the big areas that we're focused on. And obviously not mentioning, but as equally as important is our enterprise cybersecurity and what we're doing to protect the FBI's data, as well as our systems from external threats. Going back to before your civil service, you served in the military. What brought you into going into the public service route right after? My grandfather was in the military. My father, one of my brothers, is still in the military today, a doctor at West Point. And so, you know, that service uh, focus, especially around serving country, has always been 
kind of rooted in our family. So going into the military was, uh, in some ways, I think it was an expectation for me. That may sound a little silly, but it was the path that I wanted to pursue. And then after getting out of the military, I went back to grad school and having a chance to come into the civilian side of uh, the government was uh, very exciting and have had a great time in, in a number of different organizations, the longest being here at the FBI, like I mentioned, for the almost 16 years. I can definitely relate. Military is a large part of my family, and I was also pressured into trying to go into that route, but just wasn't for me. But I thank you for your service anyway. How has your experience as a military intelligence officer informed how you approach your current priorities now? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, especially compared to the FBI time in the Army and as an intelligence officer, the mission and being able to support that mission. As an intel officer, I was supporting armored commands, infantry commands, not the tip of the spear, but supporting that tip of the spear and likewise, here at the FBI, you know, as I've mentioned, the people, the men and women putting their lives on the line every day, the agents that have you know, sworn to protect uh, Americans, uphold the Constitution, they are our tip of the spear. And so in many ways, this role has a lot of similarity to that in terms of how do you support that mission? And the other thing I would say is it's a way of thinking. What I got out of my time, especially being an intelligence officer, is how you look at a problem how you set a problem up and how you solve a problem. And again, coming in, especially in the, the roles I've had here at the FBI, looking at what our current modus operandi is, dissecting it and being able to determine and figure out how to do it better in order to provide that capability that supports and enhances the operation. So a lot of similarities in the two. Both of them are very mobile organizations in motion. And so, you know, it's different in some ways of having a focus in a kind of an office park environment versus, you know, how, how are your tools and your processes being used in a very active, very motion-oriented way. And, and that's one of the things I like about it. Now, you have a pretty deep background in finance. That was a large part of your civil service in your government career. Was the transition from more of that business management function to now more of a technical IT realm at the FBI, a natural one? There's a lot of similarities. When I came in through the presidential management intern program, I had a, a number of options. And my dad was at the Joint Chief of Staff at the time. And his recommendation was, whatever you do, don't go into one of those finance jobs. They work all the time. <laughs> and in, I don't know if I was just going against his recommendation, but that's exactly what I got into. And so what I, for years, being in budgeting, overseeing accounting and acquisitions, audit processes, the business acumen that you learn from that, the scars that you gain from those processes, I think have been, you know, for me, they've been priceless in terms of shaping my experiences and my perspective. And I think coming over to the IT side, the director did not put me in this role because of my savvy technology skills. But I believe that what the organization was looking for is how can I help? We have a lot of very smart and very talented technical experts in the IT uh, branch here. But how do we align that to a business acumen? How do we make decisions in terms of priorities. How do we move from a legacy environment to more technically advanced capabilities and how you pay for that, not just in terms of the development, but how do you pay and sustain that over a long period of time? I think that's kind of where I've seen the connection of moving from the finance and facilities realm over to the IT side. And then the customer experience is the same as on the previous role doing finance and infrastructure we needed to provide capabilities to that customer, to that, as I mentioned, to those field commanders and those men and women that are doing the job. And that, if anything, that's only heightened in this role in terms of how do we make sure that their capabilities are uh, up, operational, reliable, and that uh, they can count on us to support their mission and not hinder it or hold it back. Definitely some of those military experiences, the lessons learned there probably play into here as far as problem solving and teamwork. So it sounds like it resonates pretty well. Why is IT so important when it comes to how FBI thinks about national security? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I think just in the time I've been at the FBI and you look at the cases and the investigations, the, the national security events, the saying that there's a needle in a haystack, the haystack keeps getting bigger and bigger, and it gets harder and harder to find that needle. And so there's multiple ways you can do that. We do have 
you know, for an entire FBI operation, nearly 400 locations here domestically, plus our presence overseas and 70 plus offices. We have a limited number of employees, agents, investigators, as well as our intel side. So anything we can do to help leverage that ability to find that individual or that nefarious actor How do we connect dots? How do we collaborate and communicate with our partners in the federal as well as state, local, and our international partners? Technology is a thread through that fabric that the better we get at it, it allows us to be able to do that mission, do that role more effectively. Being able to go back into our investigative data and be able to link and connect different threats and try to do that in a proactive way. 9-11, that seems a very long time ago, and having the opportunity to work with Director Mueller for almost a decade, you know, we were talking about, you know, how do we become more proactive? And that's become almost uh, the DNA of the organization, is try to thwart a, an event before it happens. And without technology, that's very, very difficult to do. And so, you know, we continue, and it's one of the pillars of the director on innovation and technology. How do we continue to lean forward in that as we go forward to allow the mission of protecting the American people and upholding the Constitution brighter and brighter? Part of the national security mission involves security of systems, as you mentioned earlier, behind the scenes, if you will. How are you thinking about security of data and things like secure mobility to ensure agents have the tools they need to do their jobs without sacrificing those important things like agility and efficiency, et cetera? It's a question I think about quite a bit now. When I was on the finance side, conversation I would have had years ago with Director Mueller was around accounting and our audit. And on our criminal side of the house, we investigate a lot of illegal activity in the financial realm. And conversation I was having with the director at the time was that we have to be above reproach on our audit, our financial statements, because it would be somewhat hypocritical if we're out investigating financial fraud or financial crimes and that we're not above reproach on our own finances. And so bringing that into an IT environment is that you know we have a world class cyber division we are significantly focused on both domestic and overseas cyber attacks as part of the national coordination efforts and so we have to be just as good in the IT realm as i described in terms of how we need to look at our finances and so as I've talked about a lot so far about what are we doing, I'll call it the customer experience. How are we making the customer experience better? That has to be constantly balanced with what are we doing on the cybersecurity side and making sure that that doesn't get behind what we're doing in terms of putting tools out there. The challenge for us is being part of the Intel community. We work on a number of different enclaves or security platforms. We have our, which I would say is our most robust and most used systems are on the secret side, but we also have TS, top secret connectivity in order to deal with the uh, Intel community. And we also have unclassified networks. So we're dealing on three different enclaves and each of them need to be protected from enterprise security standpoint. And so as we look at how we're monitoring that through our Secure Operations Center, enhancing and building on our network operations. And also, I think you having a unique opportunity working in an organization where I mentioned we have a cyber division that's looking at our cyber watch, that's looking at all of these activities going on across the globe. How are we tethered to them that we're bringing in, having that kind of internal resource? How are we working with them? Our science and technology branch, which is doing a lot of operational IT, how do we make sure that our enterprise capabilities are leveraging off of what we do on the operational side in terms of some of our more advanced capabilities in terms of red teaming, what we're doing here in ITB. So it is every day. I think it's, it's probably one of the most important things that we look at is how do we balance that whether that's our applications that we're rolling out in terms of encryption capabilities, whether that's our systems that we're putting out, ensuring that they're properly protected. A lot of effort going into that. It's a great question. That is great to hear. So on a prior episode, we actually talked to FBI's former CIO. He really did a good job of painting the picture of the agency's vast amount of data it collects. I don't think anybody really thinks about how much that is. And it's something agencies are talking about right now. And with that, the migration to the cloud, 
How has the cloud fit into your overall IT modernization priorities? We have been focused on the cloud. What I would say is that over the last several years, we've invested, one, in our on-prem capabilities, modernizing them, make sure they're more efficient. There will always be things that the FBI will likely keep on-prem just because of the sensitivity of the data that we're going to need to either have both as a primary backup, but in some cases, the primary capabilities there. But the cloud is a critical part of where we're going. We've recently moved our case management system into the cloud, which has given us a significant amount of flexibility in terms of how we have to stand up additional requirements, especially around critical incidents. It's allowed us, again, going back earlier where I was talking about managed services, to add additional layers of security and protection by what's being provided by the uh, third party. And so we will continue to look at the cloud. It's like anything, though, and it goes back to the question you were asking earlier in terms of you know, my role here on the business side is the, the cloud, and as great as it is, it also comes at a cost. It's, it's like getting a utility bill every month. And how do we balance what we're moving to the cloud and how to sustain that capability and balance with what we're doing with respect to what we're keeping on-prem and some of our other engagements in terms of where we're partnering or collaborating with other organizations. But the cloud is a big part of what I think you'll see the FBI continuing to invest in around that agility and flexibility to be able to do things without waiting you know, months or years in terms of standing up through the acquisition process on-prem servers or other requirements that you know we can now do in a fraction of the time and also seeing the benefit of being able to access them, as I was mentioning, an organization in motion, being able to access the cloud without as much infrastructure needing to support that, especially with this global mission that we have. Now, public-private partnerships, they are so important in government right now. We're seeing that to be true during this coronavirus response, for example. Is FBI working with industry or other government partners in general to leverage technologies or best practices around your IT priorities? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it comes without saying. I, when I came to the FBI, the person that recruited me in, the chief financial officer here at FBI at the time, had been the lead investigator on the Enron case, and he had a uh, profound focus on the FBI being like a large corporation, like a Procter & Gamble or General Electric with many different parts. And we need to collaborate and learn from that in terms of best practices and way forward. So taking that into a technology or an IT framework in terms of what are the leading industries doing. We also, from our operational side, work very closely with industry in terms of in the area of cyber and what cyber threats are out there and what our partners in the private sector should be looking at and learning off of them. So definitely leveraging off of that, just going through the current COVID situation, a number of private sector entities through different venues have been offering up their lessons learned and their perspective on how they're going forward and having been a part of much of many of those uh, recently in terms of comparing notes and hearing great ideas. And, you know, in some cases, it's not always possible for us to integrate all that, especially with our classified enclaves, but a lot of partnership and a lot of collaboration. We've looked at public-private partnership as a way forward on multiple things that we do in our infrastructure, as well as, like I mentioned, from a managed service perspective, along the lines of how do we go forward with uh, monitoring capabilities, technology requirements, as well as other IT functions. Now, looking into the future, are there any technologies you look forward to? So considering all the data needs that FBI is dealing with right now or maybe anticipating, is there anything in particular that you're excited about? You know, quantum computing or AI, for example? For us, as I mentioned earlier, technology represents an opportunity to allow our employees to focus more on those things that are critical for human interaction and what we train them to be able to you know, solve cases, prevent incidents, and even on the support side within ITB, you know, how do we reduce our manual efforts on keeping our systems up, monitoring? And so automation is critically important for us to continue to uh, invest in and, and advance. And that ties into a lot of the opportunities with machine learning. How do we continue to use some of these technologies on the investigative side, the use of drones and other capabilities out there? 
And then, you know, that, now that comes with a balance. Part of our charge is to investigate crimes, and that means investigating you know, American citizens. And so that comes with a burden to make sure, and that's why, you know, that human interaction, that human oversight is critically important. But yeah, I think as we go forward, continuing to look at where machine learning and eventually AI, and then in terms of some of our operational technology capabilities, as they look at some of the quantum areas areas and others in terms of how does that make us more agile and quicker connecting dots and solving crimes. Well, Rich, this was a great conversation. I'm sure we could have talked a ton more. And being a crime buff myself, I'm interested to follow all the opportunities that are happening at FBI as far as its IT posture and how that relates to the national security mission. So thanks so much for joining me. Thanks again to our sponsors, Dell Technologies and Kerasoft. We at Dell and Kerasoft are proud of the work we've accomplished with the Bureau and will continue to prioritize support for federal agencies with mission-critical work. We look forward to being part of more conversations about the impact of IT modernization within the federal government. My thanks to Rich for what you're doing at the Bureau to protect our world during this difficult time. We admire the dedication you and your team devote to the mission. Our team takes pride in partnering with FBI and appreciate the trust you put in Dell to help navigate these unprecedented times. For more information about how we're working with agencies like the FBI, please visit us at Dell.com. GovCast is a production of Government CIO Media and Research. For more podcasts, head to governmentcio.com slash podcasts. If you liked what you hear, let us know by leaving us a review in iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. GovCast is produced by Amy Kluber. Theme music provided by Big Hoax. If you're interested in sponsoring a podcast, contact us at sponsor at governmentcio.com. Sponsor at